Okay, today I'm going to show you how to do a Toyota relative compression test using cylinder speed data on our scan tool. We'll actually be using a Snap-on aftermarket scan tool for this. Uh, I've done this with the text stream as well, but it's a nice feature in the Snap-on. In fact, the Snap-on scan tool does everything almost exactly the same as the Toyota text stream does. So today we'll be looking at a 2015 Toyota Camry uh, with a 2.5 liter. So cylinder speed data became available on a lot of cars in 2006. It's available on most of the later vehicles after that. Uh, basically what happens is the PCM monitors individual cylinder RPM using the crankshaft position sensor. No different than it monitors uh, this crankshaft for misfire data. It's going to be able to tell us cylinder RPM. Our scan tool data is going to show individual cylinder speeds and then an average engine speed. The actual uh, active test is the cylinder compression test and what that's going to do is disable the fuel and ignition and allow us to crank the engine. We're going to need to crank the engine for at least 10 seconds to get some data and we don't want to exceed 20 seconds of cranking. So on my Snap-on scan tool we ID'd the vehicle and the nice thing is the tool actually auto IDs a lot of the 08 newer cars and that's what happened on this Toyota and so we went to the engine selected functional tests and then at the bottom of the list you'll see compression check so this is actually it's um, many steps that Snap-on is going to uh, give us to make sure that we understand how this test works so they're basically telling us that we're going to measure the speed of each cylinder while cranking the engine. When the test is on, fuel injection and ignition will be turned off. And it's going to tell us how to do this. We're going to initially start key on engine off and then we're going to depress the accelerator pedal. And there are a few additional steps to uh, follow if you have a smart key. And then you're going to crank the engine until the values of the cylinders change. And I'll show you the data you initially get and then what you get after cranking long enough. So at the beginning of the test, the engine speed of each cylinder will show high values. Again, I'll show you that. And then it could take up to 10 seconds for the values to change. And then here is the theory. If one cylinder's speed is higher than the others, the uh, compression pressure can be concluded to be lower than the other cylinders. So the idea here is that um, a cylinder with low compression isn't going to take as much, uh, it's not going to have as much resistance for the starter and so the starter will be able to turn the engine over faster for that cylinder. So by breaking down RPM to each cylinder we're able to identify cylinders that are faster than others. So a high RPM would indicate a low compression. Once you enter the data list, you will <coughs> turn the test on. And so the compression check is now on. At this point, I'm actually cranking the engine, and you will see some crazy high numbers, 51,000 RPM. It does take about 8 or 10 seconds for these numbers to change, and you'll get something that looks like this. So you either want to record a uh, data uh, screen, uh, you know, record a screen of data or screenshot like I did. I just took a picture of the screen to review this later because once you stop cranking, the data would go back to the original 51,000. Here we can see that uh, we have very equal cylinder speed. The average RPM is 229, and all of our cylinders are within just a couple RPM of that. I <coughs> took a uh, Excel spreadsheet and made a graph to graph in blue the actual RPM for each cylinder and then compare it to the average RPM and this graph is scaled pretty small it's zoomed in pretty well so you will notice that um, we're at right at that average line here so cylinders with low compression again will have a higher RPM just a word of caution, this is a relative test, so theoretically if all four cylinders were equally low, we would still pass this test. And then again, make sure you allow enough time for the data to stabilize and refresh. Uh, the next slide will show what happens when I removed a spark plug, so I had a dead hole. And you will see 
cylinder twos RPM increased to 338 which is far above the average of 259. I went ahead and graphed that data and so you can see our average right around that 260 and you can see the cylinder two is far above uh, cylinder uh, the, the other cylinders. Now what you don't want to worry too much when you get a relative compression test failure like this when you have one cylinder that's basically a dead hole you will see some erratic data just from the accelerations and decelerations of the crank. Um, we really want to chase down cylinder number two first. The slight differences in cylinder um, one, three, and four are nothing to be concerned about. It just has to do with cylinder two being uh, very low on compression. So, you know, we analyzed this uh, the broken vehicle, the average engine speeds at 259, cylinder two is at 338. So this test quickly and accurately identifies low compression in cylinder two. So this is a nice, clean, easy way of quickly checking compression on the engine.